welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. I'm Anastasia here with Mike, John, and our guest Blaine. And this week we're discussing Jesus Columbus, Mormons and Jews. Oh my. But before we get started, what are we drinking, guys? We are drinking the abyss. That was so from, hard to get through. From the Deschutes <laughs> Brewery in Bend, Oregon, or uh, Bend Over, Oregon, as I always yes. want to call it. Uh, what's the ABV on that? Same, it's oh, it's where know? you get Deschutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty Who knows? High. Who knows? It's a cool bottle. Yeah, it is. Oh, it's an aged. Um, it is the 2017 release. Yeah, yeah. Or so something. I got. I got to tell you, I'm. I'm. I'm excited about this. Uh, when it's aged, it does. When uh, when Blaine brought this brought this to the show, talking about this uh, uh this lost tribes hypothesis, I thought. I, I got to be honest. I thought you were batshit crazy, and I'm started looking at this stuff, and I'm wondering, are you batshit crazy? Maybe. Maybe. I think Maybe. I talked myself into it. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a lot of. Uh, there's actually some surprising things that whenever we start going um that we can get into so mainly about christopher columbus so most things that we're learning nowadays in school uh, about how history is kind of evolving from what we've uh, what we've uh, typically yeah. taught and we know that things are maybe went down a little bit differently uh it's usually like off slight variations here or there but christopher columbus is pretty much completely Incorrect. Everything yeah, well, that we learned about him in school, is completely you know, as, as as a history teacher, that I've I've found that, uh, you know, uh, a lot of that's true. Whenever you, we, get, we just don't know much about him, he's 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 a largely unknown character. I mean, we know the fourteen ninety two Columbus sailed the ocean blue, right? But was that really the year? That was really the year, much? October okay. fourteen ninety two. So there's some. That was one of the things. Uh, but okay. but but you know we we. We're pretty sure he didn't discover America. How do you discover a place that? Do we you know, know if the ocean was blue? That, that twenty-five million people it's actually uh, are kind of greenish. Depends on what part of the ocean you're in. In the true. Gulf Stream, it's very blue. Right. Uh, but God, but you know, you start weird. seeing stuff about this guy, and, and and yeah, there's a lot of questions about him. Uh, uh, even the fact, uh, I, I guess you're going to get to. It, I don't know, but the, the fact that that he kind of just appears from nowhere in history, he just kind of shows up. He does uh, to the point that that. Some people even ask whether Columbus was really who this person was. Right. So, um, so to to kind of get into that, I would actually like to start where um, a little bit before that. Uh, thank you, John. Um, you cannot see through this beer at all. No, it's pretty like, dark. Hold it up to the light. There's nothing coming through. So, what is this actually? It's this a- is the abyss. It's an. You want to read the description real quick before we get into the show? <sighs> God, it sounds. Amazing, except for that one thing. Imperial stout brewed with blackstrap molasses and licorice, dry spiced with cherry bark and vanilla bean, 50% aged in bourbon, wine, and New Oregon oak barrels. And holy dick. And for those of you who don't speak beer, let me translate. That's $15 mm. b- bottle of beer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and it smells great. It's got a good flavor. So, uh, Back to this, back to this idea. Talk to me a little bit. Uh, what have I been teaching wrong in my history class, or, or you know, what what are history teachers saying wrong about this guy? So I'm going to prelude a little bit to it. So, and this will this will be my start of my my crazy theory. Okay. So, I would say that to learn or to to know about Christopher Columbus is to start back 700 BCE. So 700, 700, 700 BC. Damn, so that guy. Vampire. That guy lived a long time. So 700 BC. Uh, what the world looks like at that point is you have uh, the Israelites fighting against the Assyrian Empire. The Assyrians, yeah, That's yeah. Right. So um, around 710 to 722 uh, BC, the Assyrians uh, take over uh, Damascus in, in Jerusalem. And what they do is they wind up exiling uh, the Israelites, most right. of the, the, the 12 tribes of Israel. Yeah. Uh, they leave two there, or two to sustain themselves there. And the other 10 are what is referred to as the, the lost tribes. The lost tribes. The 10 yep. lost tribes of Israel. So they don't really know. 10 lost tribes of Israel, um, the, the kind of uh, the, the Lord and all of that, has a bunch of different theories as to what happens to them. 
but most recently, and you're going to have to shuffle. Yep. Face, they went so, somewhere. But, Something happened. They went somewhere. There's two British historians uh, that, that that are are active right now. Uh, a guy named Alan Wilson and another name, and I'm probably going to mess this up, Barum Blackett. Um, they've done some substantial research, more than I can get into on the show right now. Uh, they did some substantial research that they believe that uh, they are they are both British historians. Yeah. And what they believe is that um, most of those ten tribes came through Turkey, came up and around through the uh, through the nor- the uh, northern part of Italy, through the uh, uh, the mountains, the Alpines, yeah, Alpine yeah, mountains, yeah. Uh, through the Alpine mountains, Alpines, and then yeah. and then wound up settling uh, in. Uh, uh, what would wind up being Great Britain, and especially on the Welsh Isle, yeah, 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 or the the, the Welsh, uh, the the western part of the the British. Uh, that's a islands. pretty that's a pretty big theory. The uh, the idea that the it know. is so a lot of their evidence, and again, and again, and we can get into some of the things that they found. Uh, it it'd probably take a whole other show to do that, but a lot of the things you can actually relate to. There's a lot of uh, of oral history, um, mm. some. Um, <laughs> Oral history, um, the writings. The best kind of history. That's the best right. kind of history. Um, writings, teachings, and traditions are. There's a lot that are shared between specifically the traditional Italians and the the Welsh people. By the way, take that down, Anna. He just gave it. He, he just. You came up with a great show, Blaine. That's fine. You're, you're you're paying oral. off already. <gasps> the history right. of oral. Ah, oh, uh, that is a. Good, uh, I've actually on, looked on, into that before. And oral history. Yeah. 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 I've actually looked into that before. It is very interesting. You've looked into it? Yes. I've looked into it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> That's I, not what I meant. I, oh. I researched it. I researched it highly at one point. That's right. God um, damn it, you guys. We have That's a, not what I meant. <laughs> we have a, a much better than me, but a younger producer, so we'll oh. probably not talk about that. But there's talking a, euphemisms there's is a fine. Lot of, uh, th- there's a lot of history that's shared between the, the Welsh and the Italians, and, and a lot of what their research uh, shows is that Around 500, a lot of their research shows that around 500 BC, um, they believe there was a massive migration that was that was mainly built of uh, um, um, some people escaping from, I guess, what that would be Asia Minor at the time. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of it, um, they believe, came from the either the the traditional uh, Israel uh, the, lost, the Israelites or some of their descendants. I, w- I will tell you that just speaking from a historical perspective, the the connection between between Italy and and, and the Welsh is, while not uh, fully accepted, is considered to be mainstream history. This is not something that that, that that's crazy out there. So, uh, you know, you, you, I, right. I'm sitting here listening to you going, I want to blow holes in this because it, because I know where you're going and it's and it's crazy to me. But but you're making an argument that makes sense to me, right? So and if you if you make a if you look at the timeline as far as from the time they were exiled and about how long it would take for them to to begin this this type of migration, um, it, the timelines actually even start lining up with from the time they were exiled to where they start uh, gathering up and, and and kind of planting roots there in, in the Welsh yeah. areas. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> so from there. Um, the Welsh now, so now we have the Israelites, we have the, the, the tribes that are there, they get exiled by the Assyrians, they take a couple of hundred years to, to work their way up. That would be the Babylonian captivity if y'all, mm-hmm. for, for our listeners. If you're looking, trying to put this in place, what he's talking about with the Assyrians is the Babylonian captivity of right. the Bible. Okay. Right. So they take a couple of hundred years or so to migrate their way up. Uh, they get into the area, of, again, to the, to the Welsh area. And I keep stressing the Welsh because the Welsh now have a now you fast forward a couple of hundred years now we're in the eleven hundreds uh, you have a a true king which and I'm gonna I'll screw the name up and I actually don't think I defined it you have a true king that that we know existed and he had a, a son uh, Prince Madoc yeah okay which may or may not there's more evidence that he did exist than not. Um, but again, his, his king father existed. We know that. Um, so now you have Prince Madoc. So now Prince Madoc tells, uh, a lot of stories about, uh, uh, traveling across, uh, across the ocean and discovering a continent or a whole other land. Discovering a new land. Yeah. That's yeah. right. 
And so, and you have him. He actually frequently goes there at, to in some of the the, the yeah, literature. Th- this is this is a common Welsh mm-hmm. fable, uh, you know, or or legend, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so he goes there. So this would predate um, Christopher Columbus discovering America by two, uh, three to four hundred years mm-hmm. around then. So, um, so now you have this this Welsh prince that has gone over and is frequenting. Um, uh, uh, coming over to what what is North America? What would be North America? And uh, for a long time, it was just uh, history or myth. But then, more recently, we've started to find certain things, um, imprints of what he was doing here. Uh, there's a there's a structure uh, around Louisville, Kentucky, because it, and again, in Louisville. a lot of uh, Louisville, Kentucky, Louisville, no, no, Louisville. 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 Yeah. Louisville. You gotta let your tongue die and then move yeah. your mouth around. Louisville. <laughs> the place where one the, the bats. Yeah. So um, you, you have a structure there uh, that, that you can look up, which is a, 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 a archaeological site um, uh, called the Devil's Backbone. Mm-hmm. And what the Devil's Backbone is, is it's a structure that was made in such a way that um, was not common to the indigenous people around there from what we know and what they've seen. Um, so in Kentucky, in Kentucky, and so and I say that because a, a lot of the and just to kind of touch on, not to get too detailed in a lot of what their myths or their their uh, their uh, history of what Prince Madoc did was, but they think he not only landed uh, on the eastern coast of uh, the United States, what you know, what is in the United States, but they actually think he frequented the uh, what would be the uh, uh, Louisiana River Delta. Yeah, the, the, that he actually traveled up through hundreds the, of years used, before used the river system. Columbus. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That that's actually a pretty big part of of the story is that he okay. used the the Ohio River, uh, the Ohio Welsh. River system. And he's Welsh. Okay. Right. I I will tell you that 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 uh, historians right. historians have have it is pretty much accepted history that the uh that that somebody was using this now now the welsh side of it that's something that's fringe still right. uh but but it's pretty much accepted history now that that the uh um you know we have to stop thinking of the oceans as 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 barriers and think of them as as highways right and that people were coming across and they were using our our river system to go into the continent that is pretty much accepted now well, yeah I, I, I mean we've we've found evidence a, a lot more of you know even uh, societies that we thought were really primitive and and who didn't have the giant seafaring ships that we imagine like handling this shit. Well, and if you ever doubt that the uh, oceans are highways, then just go to Google Maps and type walk from uh, Louisville, Kentucky to, to somewhere in, in the Welsh and, and it, will, it will explain to you exactly how to do that. <laughs> Google Maps. Yes. Well, do you think they were using Google Maps to get across or... Nah, it was probably map quest. Are there aliens? Yeah. They were, yeah, they were was, having it to print very, it out. Yeah. It was very primitive. Oh, very primitive. Was terrible. Map quest. <laughs> they might have even had to use the map <laughs> from a gas station. Like the paper ones? No, yeah. they were laminated. I mean, come on, they're not animals. Some of them. <laughs> because they were in the oceans and they were going to get wet. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Take a ride at the dolphin. <laughs> yeah. Third dolphin. Third dolphin. Third would dolphin you take a ride? The left? Well, there's a kraken was there. <laughs> <laughs> but... So not only do you see it, and to, to further reiterate on them uh, utilizing the, the river system, not only uh, can you find that uh, the devil's backbone that have a lot of similarities between uh, Welsh structures, there's also, right now, you can go there um, in the DeSoto State Park, which is in northeastern Alabama, yep. they actually have what they call the Welsh cave system. And what the Welsh caves are, it's, there is there's excavation techniques and there's also some stone markings some um, uh, just some uh, not really cave like cave paintings but there's just some structures there some uh, uh, that is not um, linked to any of the known technology for again the indigenous yeah, people yeah. of that area at the time but it I looks- don't think the devil's backbone is real all I'm finding here but is a brewery. It, and other it, beer related things. It yeah, looks because your phone listens to you. That's a fair point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it looks very similar. The buildings look very similar mm-hmm. to some of the things that you see uh, in the Scottish Highlands and in, 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 in Wales and uh, Northern Ireland. In, in that, it, very Celtic in some ways. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So then, so now the next leap a bit is that um, 
it is believed that, uh, again, so uh, you have a, a Welsh prince coming over here, but he doesn't always go back with his entire party. That sometimes uh, some of them stay there to, to begin settling. And so now you move on to um, the... And again, these people you could you could read about them. So, so settlers, not explorers. I I don't know what the original intent would have been. They wound up staying. So, some ended up. Some okay. some wound up staying. Some wound up not going back. Yeah. So I don't know if that probably a small amount. I yeah, it was okay. a smaller amount. Okay. Um, maybe they just acted naughty on the ship. Could be. Well, that, that, be. that that's possible. You know, there's yeah. a tradition. If, if if you're an asshole, we just dump you off somewhere. And yeah. Fuck you. That is true. Uh, you know that the Navy was notorious for that. For you know, Navy to the world did that. San Francisco. All the time. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what that whole fucking island was, was yeah. about. Yeah. Uh, well, so so some of them some of them stayed. Um, it is believed, and then the people that stayed um, would later become um, what we refer to as the the, the and I'm going to probably you're probably going to be better at pronouncing this the Mandane. The Mandan Indians. The Mandan, Mandan Indians. Yeah, Mandan Indians. Uh, which uh, I, I take the Mandan Indians are one of those those things that in history I really got into when I was when I was studying, right? Uh, because they're fascinating. First off, as far as we know, they are they're gone. Uh, you, you know, they're 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 uh, they they were wiped out by smallpox. So it's a I, small yeah. group. But I we can't have, go to the Mandan Casino then. You can't go to no. the Mandan Casino. But uh, eighteen but seventy seven. But was the last one. you know there were a few that got absorbed by other by other tribes. Mm. But we hear about the Mandan Indians. They're the ones. I don't know if y'all have ever heard of this uh, uh, Red Nana, but they're the ones that you might have heard in school called the White Indians. Have y'all ever heard of these guys? Mm-mm. Yeah. No. The, uh, there, there's stories of, and, and they date back to the French. The French coming in here that that came in and traded. And these Indians, they talked talked about these blonde hair, blue eyed Indians mm-hmm. that showed up, uh, and and people kind of laughed at them. But you know, during the Lewis and Clark expedition, eighteen oh three, they talk about uh, uh, running into these these white Indians. Mm-hmm. That was the Mandans, okay? Uh, that was the Mandan Indians. But I, I don't I don't know how this fits in the story. But that's that's what so, I know about them. So the Mandan Indians, what they what they know about them now. Um, the Mandan Indians have a, uh, a a couple because once they found the and again so fast forwarding a little bit to around the 17 1800s once these uh, mainly the French are the first ones who who kind of stumbled upon them uh, with the fair skin blue hair or blue eyes blonde hair Indians um, what they found was everybody was trying to link this into the European they didn't really know how uh, they were. Here, but everybody was fairly sure they were European, but they didn't really. Have by the way, where they're where they're first seen, where they're first noticed by the French, is in the area that becomes North and South Dakota. Right. Yeah. So wait, wait, wait. I I gotta kind of like try and and poke at the story just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, right? you need to. You need so, to. So so you're telling me, I got I gotta follow your little crazy train here. You're telling me that it's a, a boat. It's a boat. It's a crazy, it's boat. A crazy, it's a crazy boat. boat. A crazy boat. They had not established the rail system. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. That we know of, but give us time. Oh, we might dick's find that. For sake, are we... <laughs> <laughs> Manifest destiny. Um, anyway, so you're Fine. telling me... You're telling me that these lost tribes of Israel went out, became Welsh, and then somehow made it to America, explored quite a bit, left you behind, and created these... And this is what just hit me. Blonde-haired, blue-eyed, Jewish... Native American, not Native Americans, but immigrant Americans, I guess we'll call it. Are you yeah. telling me that there were blonde-haired, blue-eyed Jews that would later? No, I think I, I think what he's t- telling you is that there's a connection. I, I don't know. Right. I, I, Hold on, how did the tribes get lost again? Just to well, they them? weren't in lost. the Babylonian captivity. They were uh-huh. these ones that were sent off into the world, or, or sent off. And they, when the tribes returned, when the Babylonians allowed them to return, there were tribes that that. Just disappeared. We don't know what happened to them. They didn't come back. They didn't come back. Right. We don't know where they are. See, okay. All right. Out not of the twelve a, tribes, we don't know where where where. Not where, a lot of people like the Jews. Yeah. So what? they were at, kind of at that time period on right. the run a little bit. But but to get to your idea, I think what he's trying to say, and and and, and I, I've kind of looked at his notes here, so I kind of know the direction he's going here, is that the the uh, we see connections where the lost tribes of Israel reached the British Isles. 
and then they merge with the they assimilate. With, with, they, uh, they assimilate or, uh, I don't even want to say actually, assimilate because actually, no, they kind of dominated Alan, the character. No, Alan. Kept. Going okay. back to the going back to the current active uh, British historians, Alan Wilson and and the the Baron Blacklid, they actually believe that they were some of the original settlers yeah. to certain areas of the British Isles. Okay, well, well I, I lose your argument at that point because okay. where I was seeing this, where, where the where where it made sense to me was they assimilate with the Celtic people, and that's how the blonde hair, blue eyed people got came into that. Oh. I, I don't know, but we also know. Think about this. The Babylonian captivity was the forcing of the of the Israelites out to other places. They would have been settling in 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 Eastern Europe in, well, at, at times. And maybe let me let me let me reiterate. There, there's not, or let me clarify rather. They were. Alan Wilson believes that the Israelites that moved there were intricate part. Of the the, the yes. settlement, I don't, I, they that, weren't. That's the, why I said they I don't think the they became to the land. That's why I was saying that, I don't think they assimilated. I think they came and just just became part of the culture, and in some ways brought their culture with them. To assimilate means to become like the dominant yeah, culture. Right. Yeah, they didn't okay. so much assimilate as they came in and merged and and and, and created a new culture. Right. And are you saying are you saying they just, they had a bunch of sex? Is that, they had that, a yeah. bunch of sex. Okay. And now remember, Merge. this is also this is also 500 BCE. Yeah. Yeah. Around that time. Wait. A so. There's not really. This is all Old Testament, so yeah. there's no spread of Catholicism. Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. There's none of that yet. Paganism. We did a giant Jewish. jump then from like 500 BC 7, to 11. a thousand, right? Or zero. It takes a while to do things. Yeah, just like Grandma sure, used to do. Sure. Yeah. And, and a thousand. Yeah. 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 So we went 200 years from the 700 BC, from them being expelled from Damascus, right. Jerusalem, expelled in, into the world. It took them 200 years to get up there. Right. Took him a couple of hundred years to figure out the whole seafaring Dominating thing. Dominating. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. So now we're 1100. Prince Manok comes in, utilizes the uh, the North American river system. Did I lose anybody? I, I think, don't know. I I'm it, missing a thousand years here somewhere. No, you're not. You're no, missing. You're not. No, you're Have not. you read the Bible? They skipped 32. It's fine. It, it, you're not missing a lot. You're Okay. They did about, seafaring. Uh, about and then the year 700. Right. Yeah, yeah. And then they the did like 1, a thousand years of things no. here. Yeah, well, they, they 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 would have done about four hundred years. Four hundred years of things here. Four to five hundred years. Okay. Because now you're about, about the year one thousand to fourteen ninety two. Yeah, yeah. You're, now you're back on the other side. Now you're back yeah. in common era. So yeah. now we're going up again. Right. We were counting down previously. We were, and then we got to zero. Right. Yeah. And then we start going back up. So right. Now we're at yep. eleven hundred. So where do we Medieval. go from zero to? Uh, well, what you're doing, you're not you're not counting for the amount of time that they were they were in right. wells. Right. The amount of time it took for them to, yeah. to be to be uh, uh, accultured. Uh, to them, it took them like 200 years to be in Wells and get to the seafaring point, right? It, it so took that them longer than that. Like, it took, okay. them longer, okay. it took longer than that. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So they're like, very slow. Very slow. That's not slow at all. The, the lost Jewish tribe. That's not truck. slow at all. They're, they're, what, he, what he's doing is he's pointing out that these people got there and they reached ocean going time about the same time. Right. That's about the same time that, that, that you have the, the Normans reaching ocean, the Danes reaching ocean. Right. ocean okay. Okay. I guess I took a couple hundred ocean. years a little too literally. Yeah. 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 So fine. So, so now, so we're back here. So we're, we're good. So we're in the 1100s. We're good. We're in the 1100s. Fine. We're good. These yeah. Welsh that are the refugees have come over here. Perhaps they've come over here now. They've utilized the system. Some of them have stayed. They've become perhaps the Mandane Indians, right? So there's a couple of uh, there's a couple of links in between there. They became Hitler's butt cream. No, no, just some of them. They weren't all blue eyed well, black. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lewis, Lewis and Clark described them as half white, but the but, French described them as 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 very European. Right. So you're seeing as you know as time goes. They seem to be less and less. Okay. Right. They, 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 Sex will do that to you. They well, will, it, it will. They're also described in, in many of the other uh, uh, explorers' uh, uh, notes and journals. Mm. They're also described as being much more civilized than any of the other Indian tribes and the indigenous people they ran into. How much so? Much more peaceful. Well, well when, you hear, when you hear a European say civilized, you mean they right. meant like us. Okay. What, right. they, what they meant by that, just knowing a little bit about the they Mandan Indians. Uh, well, well, the Mandan Indians owned property. <laughs> right. Uh, which is something oh. that was not at all a, a, an, uh, an Indian idea. They, they, they owned property. Uh, they, they even adopted slavery, which is something that, that, that the Europeans would have seen as highly civilized. 
Well, think about it. I know. No, you're absolutely right. It's just so funny. Yeah, but, but thinking it's that something that now. other Indians didn't do. So when they get right. there, they see these and they go, these are like us. You yeah. know, I can imagine, like, like, they come up and this guy's got this, like, you know, slave with him and he's walking with him. And uh, they're they're going to negotiations, and all of a sudden the slave says something like reach over and like backhands him and says, "Shut up, slave!" And he's like, "These people are civilized Civ- as fuck." Okay. Now, now the other thing is in, so, in history, civilization in history when historians are talking, it's not the same thing as yeah, when your I mother know, calls know, you civilized. Civilization so, uh, in history means that that you have a you have a calendar, you have specialization, advanced. you have advanced, right. you have jobs, writing, and these. They did that. That's right. something different. Yeah. So, hey, guys, I, I I I hate to break your train of thought, but I'm going to be out of beer if we don't rate this pretty soon. Okay. Yeah. So my thought was, um, he's alluded to Columbus quite a few times, and I think we're getting close. We want to like leave yeah, him hanging on Columbus. Yeah, I think I think I think we need to, to hang it. Well, yeah. we're talking history here. Time's different, uh, but I, I think we need to hang it and or, or let it hang and go ahead and, and okay. do this. Let's do it. All right, so is different in historical you, perspective. I'm just saying, we're at 1100. We've got like 300 years yeah. to go to get to Columbus. That's okay. all I was saying. Okay. Shut all right, the Mike. Hell up, woman. Fuck off. Bite my ass. No, it's you were nasty. so difficult to work with. Have you seen my ass lately? I cleaned it this morning. Damn it. <laughs> He's true. Only because of the yeah, nasty things you were doing <laughs> yesterday. I, tell- yeah, I saw it. It was yeah, it's very clean. You got, got like a haircut. I'm telling you. Oh, did they? Yeah. Did they include that in the haircut? Well, oh, yeah. That's why it was so expensive. <laughs> oh, yeah. 40 bucks, right. you gotta find 40 bucks. So, what are we drinking, John? We are drinking the yeah. Abyss. The Abyss from Deschutes Brewery. The Abyss uh, from Deschutes Brewery in Bendover, Oregon. Uh, and you want they me to start this one? Ass after yeah, go ahead. Last night. Um, I tell you what, I. <laughs> you're just ruining my, 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 my rating here, aren't you? Oh, yeah. You're, is your goal in life to ruin everything I do? Yes. Okay, fair enough. So uh, I'm going to give this a pretty high rating. I think this is a, an outstanding beer. I've enjoyed it. I wish we had three more, but they're too expensive. We have to take out a second uh, mortgage on our house to get a second uh, second beer on this. Um, I like the mouthfeel. It's got, it's got some creaminess. It's it, it's good and full in the, in the flavor. Um, there really isn't anything I don't like about this beer. Um, the, the 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 curve is there. It come you know it rises as you drink it, and then when you're finished, it, it takes a, a you know a little bit of a slow fall there, and you can continue to taste it. Um, I'm gonna give this a uh, I'm gonna go four one. I was so close. Ah, you were close. I was so close. <laughs> what did you predict? Four four. Oh, I'm gonna go four one. Okay, who's next? I probably should have gone four four. I think it's that good probably. Ah. Oh. Um. Okay. The smell is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Um, I I do really like the beer. There's a that was my nickname in high school, by the way. The smell is phenomenal. <laughs> the smell is phenomenal. It's because you washed your ass back then. Um, <laughs> oh, the good old days. I bet Anna's the kind of person that goes to a graveyard and just walks across the graves. Didn't even like they are dead. See. True. But I tell you, they're all dead. I, I also think she walks around smelling people's ass to see how how clean they are. I leave that to my dog. <laughs> she collects the flowers. Like, oh, look, these are so pretty. <laughs> now that's unreasonable. They're not, they're they're not enjoying them. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, the coins. She's like, oh, look, money. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, everybody. So, um, the beer's good. I am. This is going to be bad. This is going to be bad. No, it's not beer's be good. Bad. It, it, no, it it's, is. It, it's it's good. really good. I think so. I have a problem with it. I have two problems with it. You have no taste. I will shove you out of this chair. And she will. So, um, there's something off about it, like a little nugget of wrong. The producers over there chanting, "Do it, do it, do it!" When you say you're going <laughs> to shove me out of my chair, I'm worried. Oh, he's the best. <laughs> So, anyway. The producers are loving, by the way, for anyone wondering. <laughs> today. Today. Well, no, not today. Well, no, no. Our producer oh. today is 11. Oh, okay. So Ordinarily, anyway. he's like 12. There's a, You're eight? There's a nugget of wrongness <laughs> in this beer, like somewhere around the back end. And the other thing is... No, there's not. A nugget? I will shove you out of the chair. Yes, a nugget. Um, okay. The other thing is, like, there is, what do they say, molasses, licorice, spices, aged in bourbon, wine, and oak. I think there's a lot going on. They could have stripped away a couple of those, and I think it would have elevated the flavor of this beer immensely. 
Um, I think there's a little bit too much going on, but even despite all of that, it is still a really, really good beer. And while so, I, while with I that, gen- generally I, agree, I that, go that with a three nine. Away, <laughs> three while, nine. While I generally yes. agree that stripping away increases the flavor, I am going to disagree with you on <laughs> uh, on this one. Uh, although your rating's a little low, a little yeah, low. it not, is not bad, not bad. All right. Are you really about to give this another five? So come on, come, come on Red, don't see what you got. So. I, I don't know what Anna's talking about. I don't know what a nugget of wrong is. I have no idea what a nugget I, of wrong I, is. I, I, I got to be honest. When I heard I'll her say nugget after we're talking about, about asses right before yeah. that, I was a little nervous. Yeah. I don't know what a nugget of wrong is. I don't think anything <laughs> needs to be stripped away. I think it all balances well. I think you have some strong flavors in here, like licorice. Uh, there's a high BV here. It's, it's an aged. That um, bourbon flavor's in there. Yeah. Uh, but it, not it, overpowering. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so that's where I'm going. Uh, it's an aged beer. There's high alcohol content. It's got the licorice in there. Yet none of it walks on anything else. It all balances really well. I can't think of anything that I could say myself that'd be like this beer would be better if. And with that said, yeah, I got to give it a five. <coughs> yeah, I, you've I, I, got I, to be shitting I, I me. I think I think I probably should have gone higher. Now you know, oh, you're hearing all this. For uh, sake, but uh. There's always room for improvements. So, um, yeah. like on her rating today, there was room for improvement. There, there was, right. there was. Uh, you guys have lost or, your or minds. you know, just just her general conduct on the show. Yeah, oh um, yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna stab you, Mike. Well, we have a we have a fourth uh, guest here today. You wanna uh, you wanna say your opinion here, uh, Blaine? I uh, I like I like darker beer. Um, you can definitely taste the bourbon mm-hmm. um, and the molasses. Thankfully for me, I can't really discern the licorice. <laughs> like, but like you I said, I think that might be where the nugget is coming from. I would have gone with dingleberry too. Fudge nugget. I wasn't a, trying to a reference shit. Off Although in Bend, Bend Oregon, at Deschutes Brewery, off. like I guess it is appropriate. There, there's, it's just a fudge nugget off. I'm, I'm, but I'm with Mike. I think it's got a good curve. Yeah. It, it doesn't really hang around too long. Um, I love it when they say I'm with Mike. Yeah, I'm with Mike. I, I but I'm gonna go. I am gonna go a little bit higher. I'm gonna go with. Four eight. Four eight. That's All right. right. Okay, so he's you're closer to being with John. Yeah. But yes. I'm I'm with you. I think there's yep. there's room for I don't know where it is. I'm not I'm not good enough to know that. I, 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 I'm gonna tell that you that, that since since you shifted from being with Mike to being with John, you are dead to me now. Uh, um, you're alive to me, brother. Uh, nice. But, uh, <laughs> All right. Four Mike. point four. Four four? Okay. On beer advocates. Okay. That's, that's, so was Mike was the closest and, and Damn yeah, right I was. Yeah. Damn right I was. All right. Uh, good beer. Real good beer. Uh, if you haven't oh, had this, go ahead and take out a second mortgage in your home and, and, and pick it, it up. It is worth it. Even a 3.9 beer is worth Absolutely. going out. Absolutely. Absolutely. What's the ABV? D- does it sound weird? All of it. It's all of it. I it's all, yeah. It's all yeah. Just the ABV is all of it. Um, all the alcohols. Because I, I didn't see it on yeah. here. Yeah. Um, it is. If it's readily done. available. Not readily yeah. available. Eleven point four, eleven point four, which is yeah. essentially okay. all of it for a beer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, 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 I will get this one again, definitely. Uh, yeah. And and they had it. Uh, so we got this at Fresh. A lot of times to get something like this, we would have to go to the brew club and yeah. wait till they get it in. Yeah. They had this on the shelf. They had a, a good deal of them. They're just expensive. Well, I'm gonna go buy me one. Um, yeah. Very, yeah, very soon. Uh, I'll definitely buy that. All right. So. You left us hanging here, uh, Blind. Okay. We're, 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 oh, we're, we didn't 100. play our game. We didn't play our game. Oh. Fuck date lawnmower. We, yep. have to, we have to play fuck yeah. date lawnmower. Yeah. So, fuck uh, absolutely gets you laid. Absolutely gets you laid. Although it's bordering on a Cosby beer. Uh, yeah. A Cosby beer. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you see? <laughs> yeah, I see what you're oh, saying. while you're saying Cosby, I got to tell, tell a story. I went to the George W. Bush Presidential Library yesterday. This is going to be a way to <laughs> no, 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 go no. on. I'm there, and they have the Presidential Medals of Freedom that he that, that, that George W. Bush gave away, and the pictures of him doing it to all of them, and then a list of them. And I'm looking at it, and I made a, made a startling <laughs> uh, uh, a, a n- notice here. Did he really love he, sex offenders? He <laughs> gave the Presidential Freedom to Bill Cosby. His uh. name was on the list. But his picture was not up there, there with him doing oh. it. So it was uh, it was done in such a way that unless you actually went and read the list, you would not have known it. You know, but I, I think, thought I'd share that. I with thought him. I thought he would have. That's gave kind it. of fucked up. I thought I, he would have gave I'd it to the that. guy that uh, made Jello. See, I think, <laughs> I think that that Cosby deserved one. Now, hear me out. 
He let all the girl, girls go, go afterward. <laughs> so, I and mean, they he were, did free they them. They were free He afterwards. freed more people. Except, than- except they didn't have the freedom to choose whether to have sex with him or not. So, uh, you know, that's got to be a strike. Freedom isn't them. free. That's freedom what- isn't free. <laughs> so I thought I'd share that story with you. All right. So, so fuck absolutely. Date. Date. Uh, uh, I'm going to bring this one out. This I think is they special- had more than we did. I think, I think they did. that's what happened. They've lost think, their fucking minds. I think this is a special occasion beer. I mean, I, I've mentioned these four. You can use it as a first date beer, but th- this is when you're pulling out the stops, when you're throwing a Hail Mary on a date. And you're, you, you a know. Hail Mary? Yeah. Really? You're like, going back you to that Cosby are thing. fucking losing. No, 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 no. Is this like, like your ask him to move in beer? No, no, no. So, so I'm saying it's a girl or a guy way out of your league, but you're just like, I'm going to try something here, see if it works. And you're bringing out all the stops. Cause you, you just, what other stops do you bring out on that date? Uh, like a limo. Handcuffs. And han- yeah, handcuffs. You know. Be careful. She's going to start listening Feathers. to things that you've done for her. <laughs> <laughs> no. Wasn't that hard. Anyway. That's true. Uh, I never did feathers for. Yeah. So, so, so you, you can um. use this on a Hail Mary date. Uh, but other than that, I, I would did say. I for John once, though. He needs it. I would say bring it out for the, you know, bring it out for the proposal. Not when you make the proposal. When you tell the in-laws about the proposal you made, um, or, you know, I think or he's you, crazy. I think he's crazy. He's, how I am think I, you're what, crazy. What, how am but I crazy I here? This, this is time. not a special occasion beer. No, I think it's a special occasion beer, beer but I think it's an any occasion beer. Uh, yeah, the special I, occasion, it, I have I think 15 extra dollars. I think it is such oh a good God. beer that it works at any time. Uh, but now, it's not going to be, if, but, if, your, if your girl or guy does not like beer, that you, you know, they're not going to yeah. like this. But but here's the problem. But you need with, to trade them anyway. Here's the problem in a dating situation with using this as any occasion beer. Where do you go? Yeah, it's where do you go from there? High. You just buy another bottle of. You this. go to a lizard uh, of cause that actually deserved a five. A, a lizard of cause just, that actually deserves a five. What you. do you mean? She told you. Like you uh, get a different bottle that I don't. I don't see what you're saying there. It <laughs> wasn't clear. I'm saying you asked where do you go from here. I said you go to lizard of cause. A beer that actually deserved a five. Or a beer. Or, okay. I'm just going to yeah. heroin. <laughs> heroin is good after yes. this. If you run. I took over chemotherapy after that. We had a great time. <laughs> All right. So lawnmower. Um, this is this is not a lawnmower beer unless you're planning on going swimming in your lawnmower. Um, if you want to get drunk and drive your lawnmower into the pool. Oh, this I was is, wondering this is how you one. swim in your lawnmower. Obviously, you have never drank with me Clearly. when I'm mowing the lawn. Drank. Um, you, you don't know, drive you this into the You drink Rolling light. Rock. I don't think it matters. If you drink enough of it, it works. I'm oh, just saying. Okay. I just caught something. Yeah. I just caught something. So I want everybody to hear this. We can go back and listen to the show. When I rated Lizard of Cause a five, I got shit for hours. You, you did. You did. Everybody was on my ass. I've had it since. Now it deserved it. Now all of a sudden, I rate another beer five. She's like, "Well, the last one deserved a five, but this one, yeah. and the shit comes back." Yeah. So I just want to point that You're out. Gonna be- I just At want to point rate, that out. You are going to be rolling out fives every other fucking week. I've done two in five in, in three, three years. Three and a half years. Yeah. 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 Well. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, whatever. Whatever. All right. So back to uh, our, our our show where you left right. us hanging. Uh, <coughs> Blaine, jump in here. So okay. So to this point, the only thing that I've expanded upon from uh, the uh, Mandanian Indians is that they are white. Thank you. That uh, they're white, and that's why they're widely believed to be European, and they're civilized, and that sort of thing. Is that better? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. So, I'm, not, so, I'm not used to all the hey, microphones. No, it's cool. I'm going to go ahead and do this. Yeah. Um, so the, the we're, we're adjusting his microphone for anyone who's not watching. Uh, the microphone's directional, so it's actually louder on this part than it is on this part. So, oh. yeah. Anyway, yeah. go ahead. And so like, when you turn your fancy. head, if you like do this number, yeah. Yeah, 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 you got to turn into the mic when, yeah. you're, when you're... I'm playing. learning as I go. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry about that. So Always happens with our guests. It's cool. So, Sometimes happens with me. That's also true. <laughs> well, and Mike has too much beer. So, um, but yeah. So other other than that, I haven't really expanded upon it. But there's actually a couple of things that <laughs> the Indians uh, do that, um, and and hopefully we can show a graphic because this kind of gets starts to get eerie. Um, where they have a lot of structures that are the same as is the original yeah. Welsh. Uh, uh, settlers of that that particular area. They also have a boat. This is the one that kind of got me thinking that there was a lot more to it than uh, than maybe what was just uh, uh, myth and legend. Uh-huh. Um, they actually have uh, what the 
the Mandan Indians refer to as a bull boat is almost the exact same as a Welsh... Stay in your microphone, please. Sorry. A... I'm trying to read my notes. A, pick, pick up the notes. I'll put it on the head. Ah, oh, but see, this looks so bad. I can see it. No, nah, right. you're good. You're, um, you're good. A Welsh, Welsh core cow. Think I. Yeah, yeah. What is he? Think I said that wrong. Core cow. Core cow. Yeah. Okay. So they're they're a very oddly designed boat oh, uh, for what you would be doing. Uh, they're used mainly for uh, kind of in stream fishing and that yeah, sort of yeah. thing. Uh, they are not the the style of boat. Uh, that the other Indians had in the Northern Plains, um, in the indigenous people to North and South Dakota, uh, they have nothing, nothing, nothing like even this. remotely, not like even it. remotely close yeah. to it. Um, they also have a a um, a tradition, and I'm going to screw this up too. Oki Paw ceremony, and so what the Oki Paw ceremony is, uh, and again, this is just another thing that only the Mandane Indians did. Um, it's been researched uh, again by Alan Wilson, um, and it's an annual rededication, almost like a revival. It's an annual rededication, and in the Old Testament, Moses uh, actually the the, the uh, tradition of the rededication for the Okipa ceremony actually follows almost identical to the rededication that Moses actually. Uh, portrays in the Old Testament. Yes, and 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 you know that, that they've got their stories. If you look at Mandan legends, uh, you know Mandan legend has that uh, that, that these that, that the Mandan Indians were descended from a from a, a a white man who came across the waters in a canoe. Right. Uh, and and they even have a legend of uh, of a great flood, a virgin birth, and a child born who can perform magic. All these are parts of their 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 their. Uh, That's pretty their common, though, right? It is common, but I think that that I think the I think the commonality does more to to defend it than it does to hurt it. It shows that there is something there that's that's linked. And the thing that got me a lot about this is, again, and I hate to, I, I know this probably sounds very minute, but the boat that they have, I, I did some fairly extensive research on just that because once I saw the two depictions between. Uh, the, the the Welsh corkow and the bull boat. It's again for the purposes of what they were using it for in the inland uh, rivers of North America. It is almost and again they they almost went out of their way to design a boat this way. It, what you come down to is you either have to accept that there is that there is some kind of of migration where the ideas cultural diffusion is happening, or you have to accept the idea of of concurrent invention, where the same object was invented concurrently in different places. And I'll be honest, both of these are accepted by historians for a lot of things. We talk about it with language, we talk about it with religion, we talk about it with flood stories. It, it comes down to what you think is more it, it is more believable, that there's a shared background or that the same thing was invented uh, concurrently in different places. Okay, look, I, I'm really enjoying the history here, but i got to stop and chase a rabbit because um, we got some... We got some beer stuff to talk about for just a second. Yeah. So, with a beer that's good, it's always good etiquette to try to rinse the glass and get every morsel you can. You've got to, absolutely. So, so we brought bourbon to rinse our glass with. But, in a six pack philosophy first and hopefully last, we have also brought out what Michelob Light? What, what kind of show is Ultra? Ultra. I can't, what kind of show is this turned into, know. Anna? I, I can't do liquor. I was a little concerned. I understand. I, I, I do I think was it was funny. To be nice. You know, Blaine, I didn't say anything earlier, but I'm going to say it now. Whenever we're doing our ratings, and Blaine says, "I love a dark stout beer," I and I'm thinking to myself, "But you drink Michelob Ultra? Uh, it's okay. I drink Rolling Rock sometimes. I drink Dos Equis sometimes. I, I, I get I it. I did the courtesy of hiding it under the table. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I even wonder. want it to be here. Oh, just, exactly. it's, it's out. We know. Just what exactly bring it up, are bring we it drinking? Uh, this you know. is Bullet Bourbon. You know, oh, it's so it's. Good. It is good. It, it's not going to be your 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 most uh, hipster bourbon. This but is actually it's... left over from when we did the um... eggnog. Eggnog yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, good it's a good Video bourbon eggnog. that you can uh, find on the shelves of most places where you yeah. get bourbon. Great bottle. Yeah. Yeah. Don't sniff it like you sniff a beer, though. Yeah. Don't breathe it either. Yeah. <laughs> or, it. or or no. or like you sniff cocaine. Don't. Yeah. God, don't do that at all. <laughs> 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 Whoo. I'm asleep. <laughs> Although I will say, if your shot ever lands in your eye rather than in your mouth, she gets 
Save that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Save that. That's an audio. Okay. Why, do we'll, I, um, why do I open my... Save that, too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to put those together. Oh, God. Right. So, Go ahead, Blaine. It, so I, I can see the clip now. If the shit ever gets in your eyes, shit gets crazy. I mean, why, why do, do I open, open my, my mouth? mouth? <laughs> oh. So, um... So sad. No, you're not. So, in, 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 in those things, the, the structures and the, the tools that they used... Um, it, just to touch on it one more time uh, before moving on, I would like to, because me and Mike off camera, and I think Red too, we all had a discussion uh, about um, certain technologies developing at certain levels yeah, of, yeah. Uh, um, I guess, latitude lines. Isothermic migration. That's right, yeah, isothermic yeah. migration. And so these are pretty off kilter from one another. If, if, from where they started. For our audience, if you're interested in isothermic migration, go read the book uh, Guns, Germs, and Steel. Right. That's what that, that whole book is that. about, is, right. is how uh, people move from la- similar latitudes to similar latitudes from east to west or west to east. And that's why you have uh, uh, similar inventions at, at similar latitude levels. It works that's in those right. places. And so it just, it just adds to say that they're two very different locations. I mean, for clarification, yeah, I was there. I was just thinking about Beyonce's butt the whole time. So I don't – I, I would – I was there, <laughs> technically. It's a matter of honesty, but I think you could choose better butts. Um, yes. We so, just lost all of Beyonce's fans. <laughs> Which is everybody. Which is everybody. I was thinking about, about her in that one photo she didn't want on the internet. I mean, I mean her music is okay, but I just I don't yeah, know. Music. Right. Yeah, I think she yeah. dances like a floppy dead fish. <laughs> and we just lost floppy dead fish. Okay. <laughs> so, and the last thing I'll say about the, the, the Indians is that it gained so much traction uh, about uh, trying to um, really to almost uh, uh, not really capture, but to just interview them uh, at, at such a point that Thomas Jefferson, whenever he was president, he actually wrote uh, to, we then actually had, well, this is something else that I found out, we didn't actually had a governmental uh, core of discovery. Yeah, that was the Lewis and Clark expedition. That's right. And so what it was an actual whole department. And the lead of that department, who would later become the first or the second governor of the Louisville, uh, or the Louisville, Louis- 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 no, the Louisiana, Louisiana. Oh. <laughs> the Louisiana Territory, um, in, in a letter, Thomas Jefferson wrote to Meriwether Lewis, uh, again, the then time, the, the Corps of Discovery, that some of his personal cabinet, uh, they were doing their research. They were actively investigating uh, these the, the the white Indians dubbed at that point, uh, and he was actually given direction of where to direct uh, the uh, people that were in the core of discovery to search. Um, which at that time they the last sighting of them, which this is 1804, uh, and then in quoting Thomas Jefferson, that the Welsh Indians are around Missouri. That's again that's just kind of a snippet of one of the letters that he wrote to them, yeah. but they were. They were aware, they actually had enough knowledge at that time to at least believe that they were Welsh Indians. Yeah, yeah. That they were. But they referred to them as, yeah. That's right. All right, I already know the biggest criticism of this whole, like, like boat we're all riding. Right. Because if anyone's watching on the YouTube right now, they'll see that Blaine's sitting here turning his paper yeah. like a wheel on an East Texas back road, okay? Yes. He writes notes like a crazy man. I, I, yeah. He's a he's a few yeah. push pins and some string away from. This is how my entire place. Is. <laughs> That's exactly what mine look like most of the time. I understand. Yeah, at my office, if anybody cleans my desk, that I'm like two weeks behind. <laughs> and it, it, every, everything that. looks like gibberish. I actually get that. But John's the only one here who does notes in any sort of tidy fashion and gives shit to everybody else for it. But it's terrible handwriting, so I make up for it. It balances. Right. So he types them all. Fuck him. There's there's a couple of other um, there's a couple of other references then that kind of that kind of uh, reverberate out through some of the native Comer- uh, Native American communities, um, but again originating from these Welsh Indians. Uh, and I know that Mike knows maybe a little bit more about some of them. Um, there is a particular war chief um, that uh, spent some time with. Supposedly, some of the the uh, uh, Mandarin uh, Indians. Yeah, Mandan. Mandan Indians. Sorry, uh, Mandarin Indians. They Mandarin, made the oranges, yeah, right? The oranges. <laughs> yeah, they were the Trumps. Yeah. Um, where there's there's a couple of different Indian war cries that. Um, yeah, Joseph Riverwind. That's who you're right. talking about here. Yeah. Uh, that 
uh, again, very similar to uh, Jewish, uh, Jewish, uh, Jewish prayer echoes that they would do before they would go into war. Um, so it, it, there's, there's also, and, and, and again, if you'd like to expand upon this, the, uh, the stone that they found in New Mexico that uh, has a lot of uh, ancient, um, looks like a basic Hebrew writing it, that, that reference Yahweh. Um, or, or something very similar right. when you see it. it, it it's something that, that, that would very easily uh, uh, come from Yahweh. Now, again, we're not saying that what you're reading is, is Semitic writing. What you're reading is Indian writing, but it, it, it follows the linguistic patterns you expect a language to do as, it, as, as it's moved. Right. It's very close. Uh, there's a case, uh, you talked about Joseph Riverwind a minute ago, who uh, talks about the unmistakable traces of Jewish prayer. They have a, uh, there's a prayer that uh, the northern Arawak Indians use where they, 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 they sing something and they, they sing the words, Shima Shima Nayana Papakaka Hoya Ya. I know I'm, I'm, I'm messing that up there. Uh, but if you translate that, they, they took those words, those are Indian words, and you take it, and you take it to a, a, a Semitic speaker and he reads them or hears them and he can understand it. Right. And what he understands, it's close enough that it's, that it's, Listen, people, as you gather together, we will dance before the Creator. And when you put that together with the fact that there is a prayer called Shema in 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 Jewish, you say that there you know there's people that look at that and go, "There's a link here somewhere." I was gone for like 18 seconds, and we suddenly suddenly the Welsh Indians were Jewish. No, 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 no. It's history. You were gone for 150 years. Yeah. Well, go ahead. Uh, right. No, no. Uh, again. You, we're, we are looking. The, we're not were talking they Jewish about, when they got here? Oh yeah, because they were the lost. No, oh, yeah, yeah. I, okay, no, I, I, catch I, up I, again. Again, it's not that they're Jewish. It's that they're using. They're Jewish. They're, use, they're using the same word for God. Uh-huh. Right. The, the language. They're looking at language similarities. Right. Uh, their Jewish. prayer. Their prayer is called a shema. The Jewish prayer is called a shema. Right. The word for their God is is very close to Yahweh. It's three letters. It's Y H uh, or Y W H instead of Y H W H. Very close to it. So you look at it and you say that there's there there appears to be a link. I think is what they the have very is. similar ceremonies. The ceremonies are very. They similar. have. Um, uh, they have very similar customs uh, to to burying their dead and this sort of thing. Dead cutting. Uh, Chief, mm-hmm. Chief Riverwind talks no. about that they refer to their god as Yahya. Now Yahya is it it, it it it's very similar to Yahweh. Right. Uh, now on the other side of it, it's also very similar to the Greek word for grandfa or grandmother Yahya. But you look at it and you say there's there is a similarity here. Right. They're not saying that it's that, that it's it is necessary well, they're saying there's enough in, similarity to make you question and the, and the key point to this is not only there's a <laughs> is there a lot of similarities between those two particular uh groups of people but to the welsh indians and the jews to you yeah, right okay but to the rest of the native americans there is a very large difference between them and the with, welsh with most indians. of them okay. but there are other like, like the cherokees called their god yohiwa that sounds very similar to Yahweh as well. Yeah. So, so you, you know, you at some point the evidence ha- has to build up to a point where you say we have to at least look and say is there a connection? Right. So here's the most believable part of this that that I've seen so far. Whenever there was this melding between, if it happened, between Jewish tradition and Native American tradition, and they came together and they were having the meeting of what things they were going to keep and what things they weren't, like there was, I guess there was one guy in the back who goes, hey. The yeah, thing we do where we, we cut off the ends of our dicks. Can, can we not keep that one? Can we, can we let that one go? And they're like, yeah, you know what? We, we don't need yeah, that we'll one anymore. Get rid of that. That's fine. Yeah, that's well, fine. if you look at it as as the Jewish faith faith spread into other religions, into Islam and into Christianity, that's the first thing they got rid of. Yeah. Understandably, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's interesting that you that, that you you say that jokingly, yeah. but if you look at it, it really does kind of make sense with the with the way right. things have worked elsewhere. Um, no, it makes it. That's the most believable part absolutely. of this whole story. Yeah, let's, let's I, if they had kept that, it would have been like, "Nah, you're nah. full of shit. You're so full of shit." Nobody was like, "Yeah, let's do that." So, so now, so just again, one more quick recap. We went from being exiled, mm-hmm. uh, migrating up through Italy, up to what is now, uh, or what would be the the Welsh uh, area of, of Great Britain, Wales, yeah, Wales. Um, 
then then migrating from there with uh, Prince Madoc over throughout the North American continent uh, to the what would be referred to as the Welsh Indians, who again would be somewhat descendants of the the lost tribes of Israel. So, so now, Jewish. right. So right. now we're to the 1400s. We're okay. finally to Columbus. Now we're to we're getting to Columbus. Okay. We're in yeah. We're we're at Columbus now. We're in striking distance. That's right. Yeah. So now we have the Spanish Inquisition. Yeah, uh, where, where the Jews were, were were punished dramatically, drastically in in Spain. Yeah. Right. Is this is this the one where, where they came through and like broke all the glass and stuck them in ovens and? Well, they they did lots of stuff. They hung them from there. Uh, a lot of yeah, 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 lots of terrible things. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, and, and, and by this point, you have. Catholicism against the Jew and the Protestant. Right. Yeah, yeah. So what you're saying is the Holocaust won the first time. Oh, not at all. No. Not at all. We did the first time back when we talked about the, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the lost tribes. <laughs> yeah, there's there, been a couple. There's been a couple. Yeah, the, the, the Jews have been screwed throughout history is what we're right. saying. Lots of times. Yeah. Right. And sometimes not with in Indians. That was the yeah. good kind. That was the good yeah. kind. Yeah, that was a good kind of screwed. <laughs> not the other kinds. All right, so we so, are back to... Uh, Spain in the 1400s. Right. So now we're in the Spanish Inquisition. Um, you have a lot of Spaniards that are there that are uh, hiding uh, the fact of them being Jewish. Yeah, yeah. Who are referred to as Moranos. Moranos, yeah. So it is now believed that Christopher Columbus was one of these Moranos. Okay. And that comes from the root word for brown, right? Or I, am I, well, I, don't I... I don't know. I'm just thinking from. about the Spanish yeah. I know. Or, yeah, I, I, anyway. I, I don't know. Uh, anyway. That is quite a honker. So, um... Oh, geez. damn! <laughs> Good luck! Damn! There goes the show. Uh, oh, my God. Joking! Good night, but everybody. Was- By the way, she was looking at a, at a painting of Christopher Columbus when she said that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, <laughs> all right. Well... <laughs> Take another drink, guys. So, it's deep. It, so it, it is. It's it's believed that Christopher Columbus was one of these Moranos. There and are that, a lot of mainstream historians that believe this. Right. And, and this is where I got to defend this a little bit. I mean, I don't know a, a, a lot about the the Jews and the Indians' history, but I will say I, I've actually heard about this well before the show yeah, started. Yeah. Um, right. So I mean, this is nothing new to me. Right. I'll say here's a, probably one of the even with all of the Secret Jews. Um, That's what that, yeah. Oh, okay. So, so even with with all of the 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 um, insane things that that I've learned about as far as the links between the Native Americans and this sort of thing, uh, probably one of the the things that I've learned about the most that have completely changed my mind is I don't know if Christopher Columbus was ever out to discover anything other than somewhere to relocate Jerusalem. Okay. A what? new Jerusalem. Oh, hold on. That you dropped that like that was a little thing. So, so, so not just why couldn't he go to the neighbor's house or some so, shit? What are you talking about? Not they just kill him. So since now seven hundred AD uh, or common era, you've had the Moors that are yeah since seven eleven pretty AD. much right yeah. since seven eleven you the, have the Moors the Muslims that are, the Moors have, have controlled Spain. That's mm-hmm. right. They've controlled Spain They're, from seven eleven to fourteen ninety two. That's right. So now you have the Spanish Inquisition, that you have uh, some of the Catholics that are now against the Jews as well, where yeah. they, they've they've run them into hiding, not like they weren't already. Now, by Catholic at this time, he means Christian because they're True. Protestants haven't right. broke off right. yet. Fifteen right. nineteen. So Catholic was Christian. No Martin yeah. Luther. Yeah. So um, Europe and the known world, in quotations, the known world, not too great a place. To be no, Jewish. a terrible place yeah. to be. Yeah. Very not good. Very violent. So you now have a people that have a tradition, or, or, or at least stories, of some of their descendants, perhaps, of the lost tribes that have ventured out into this new land, right? And we know that some of them have gone out there. Perhaps they've stayed. They don't really know. The so, new land being here. New land being North America. For our, yeah, yeah, North right. America. Right. So, Christopher Columbus is kind of just, to me, he may not have been looking to just discover new land for the sake of of his new founded country, as we're all learned. Uh, oh, wait, hold on. Uh, I, 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 Italy. 
or Spain, I think you're rather. making a jump here because I learned about Christopher Columbus, and he wasn't trying to discover shit. He was trying to get to India. Uh, yeah. like, uh, again, that that's that's a possibility. There are those that disagree with that. A lot of the stuff that we learned about Columbus is just flat out wrong. Uh, you know, so the, if they didn't think that he was going to India, where did they think he was? So well, they they, what they was he did. Doing? Well, the, the argument here, the, the Jerusalem thing, doesn't make. Here's sense. the biggest part, oh, but it does. It does because yeah. historians make this argument all the time that Columbus sold it to Ferdinand and Isabel as, "Look, I'm going to find us a short route to India." That's right. But do you know who funded the trip? Isabel. Yeah. yeah. Two private. Jewish businessmen, large parts of it, large parts of it. That that that, that and that is could a fact. not could not have happened without them. Uh, what, what they did is they loaned the money to the crown. The crown funded it, but it was loaned to them. That's this. right. Yeah. Uh, so they you, wouldn't have done it otherwise. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you start seeing these facts, and 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 the question is, is what Columbus said he is doing this for? To Isabel, the, to Isabel, the truth, or is that propaganda? And there is a large argument out there that says that Columbus had maps in front of him. He knew there was a land there, and he was looking for it. Oh, he had maps of America. Well, we he know there were. Maps we know of there America. were maps of we America. Have, yeah. There is then. no doubt there were maps of America right. before this. You can look at maps dated well before Columbus that have Vinland on it, which is uh, which is just north of the United States and Canada. This is there. There is no doubt. We have proof that the Vikings had reached here in the year 1000. So right. you start reach, reading this stuff, and you've got to wonder, where did he get this stuff? What was the connect? How did he have these maps? So at the time— But they were all flat. He was trying to prove the world was round. He was not trying to <laughs> prove the world was round. The, uh, all Say it again, make my mind. All educated so, people knew the world was round Colum- during Columbus's time. So if you think about Except it— Except for Columbus. So if you uh, think Columbus about it— Columbus knew the world was round. Was so if you think about it, Spain at the time had the largest— naval yeah, force yeah. present. So if you were going to get something done, you probably wanted to have the crown on your side. And you know, and we know it wasn't his first choice. That's right. Columbus tried he tried the uh, uh he tried Venice, right. he tried uh, the king of England, he tried Philip the Fair in France. They all told him you're bad shit crazy, you're not doing this. That's right. He was desperate when he went to Spain. Did he they won. tell him he was batshit crazy or were they just not stupid enough to believe him and they saw he was like lying to them? Well, Probably a little bit of both. This is a time period when most ships never, when ships sailed, they never left sight of the of land, right. because when you got out there, there was, you, I mean, you had a you had a mariner's compass that told you north from south, but you didn't have an astrolabe yet. You didn't know what latitude you were on. Knowing north from south isn't going to do much good for you, right? If you're in the middle of the ocean, because right. you don't know what latitude you're at. Right. And they were a bit preoccupied with, uh, you know, all those. And they've got you know, and wars and shit. On, too. So. Uh, so think about the balls it took to go out across the ocean with nothing but a compass that says north and south. So and that's so a, I think Mike just told you the thing about Christopher Columbus's balls. Right. So but but think about the think about the actual I, motivation I for the trip. I bet that's a porn video. I, I uh, bet if you typed in Christopher Mike's Columbus's balls, something would show up. <laughs> oh my god, I don't want to see that, but now I feel like I have to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean it, but you do, once you start reading some of this and once you start learning about some of it, then the motivation of the trip actually makes a lot more sense. Where it gets funded from makes a lot more sense. And it was almost like they were trying to find a new safe haven. We know that there was maps that existed in North yeah. America, so it wasn't like mm-hmm. uh, he thought that he was trying to, to, to discover a new land purposefully, uh, so to speak. We know that it was funded by two... Jewish businessmen, private yeah. businessmen. Early bankers, yeah. That's right. So we know all these things, and with all that being said, it, it does make you think, you know. Perhaps they were looking for a. Perhaps, perhaps this person was trying to find a new Jerusalem. I like that name, New Jerusalem. That's right. Yeah, the, the, so a new home, a place where the, where the Jewish people could escape the persecution in Spain. That's right. But from. Almost all of the known world, not yeah, just yeah, Spain yeah, yeah, per yeah. se. But I mean, in the, which is why, why I think he reached out to so many Jews? people. Well, the, the the Christians hated him at this point because they were they, they referred to him Jesus. as Christ killers. Yeah, right. yeah, that whole Jews yeah, thing. yeah. Okay, and there was a lot of Christian. Christi- why and, did everybody and, and else hate him? Uh, because they had the land for a while, oh. and, and then and then honestly, 
at first they had the valuable land, and then after that it was just, I think it was just habitual hate. It was just... Like why people hate them now. Yeah, yeah, it was just, it was just anti-Semitic, I, I, I habitual hate. I think less, hate. but I, like why people hate them now. I, I think it's less now, but it's, it, it's still pretty tough to be a Jew in this world. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's still pretty tough. Probably one of the most At least globally. Point. Oh, yeah. At yeah. least well, through I was going to say, I think like, yeah. I think probably in the U.S. it's not so bad. Uh, in Hollywood it's not. No. Are we going to go into that now? Oh, hold on. Is this That's why this, is this video about won't to turn make into a thing? <laughs> no. I I I'm, I'm I'm just saying that you know, Sam, I don't know why I'm asking you. Samuel Does this Goldwyn translate Bear. into ho- Hollywood shit too? Does this translate into Hollywood shit? Yes. I don't think no, he's they, going there. No. Uh, okay. I don't know if anybody to be honest with you, I mean with as much of this being known as it is, I, I don't know why anybody has it written more about it. Well, I uh, think they have, but they haven't. They haven't been seen at. Hasn't been seen as credible. Right. So, so again, so my argument would be that Christopher Columbus did not set out to find uh, a new path to India, gotcha but more. rather set out. Oh, thank you, Hannah. A pretty glass is not but, hide uh, your shame. <laughs> But rather set out to find it. a new safe haven for uh, the Jewish people. Yeah, okay. That, that's that's interesting. Um, so is there any other evidence that, that Columbus was Jewish besides just to, just his face here? Well, did you say his face? His space. Space okay. on the map. I'm sorry. That wasn't very good. His geography. So um, His face. That was you that said that, not yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, you're the one. You're so <laughs> Christopher Columbus, whenever he wrote his will... Um, oh he, yeah, I'm seeing that now. Go he ahead. did. He did a couple of things in his will that are, at for the time period and perhaps now, um, almost exclusively within Jewish customs. Um, he left a, and I don't have that particular note in front of me, but I think Mike uh, might see it. Uh, he left a portion of his uh, estate for as a tithe. Yeah, one tenth. Right, one tenth uh, to. Um, uh, As a dowry for poor girls. Dowry for yeah, poor girls. Yeah. Uh, a, 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 a common Jewish custom at that time right. period. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That, that's and then his second uh, should be another one on there. Uh, talking about the way he signed his names, uh, they look at they they, they look at the, the way he he would sign things doesn't stick to the grammatical rules of Spanish right. at the time. It, in fact, sticks to a closer closer to a Semitic rule in the way things were done, uh, which doesn't necessarily prove that he was Jewish, right. but it proves that he was around Jewish people. You know, that there, 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 there's something there. there. Yeah, okay. right. Which, in Spain, you know, could, 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 could easily happen, yeah. The dowry thing, yeah. was that only, like... For Jewish girls, or was that for like it, just any poor it, girls? I, I don't know. Did you sign it? Seen anything? All no, I've, all I I've just seen is, is poor, po- yeah, just poor girls. girls. But the okay. fact that it was that it was one tenth, and it was going to that was something that was common in the Jewish right. system at that time, and, and not common in, in other systems. And again, okay. the Jews aren't very popular at this particular point in right. history. So y- you would be almost defying everyone to go out of your way, yeah, to adopt be, some of the Jewish traditions as opposed to if you weren't. That just what you were, oh, okay. and yeah. then so you let this be known because it's yeah. the last will and testament. Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, I mean, it's not like they were going to kill you. Well, at that point, uh, but at that point, though, a Christian doesn't want to even uh, in this particular time period, a Christian doesn't even want to be mistaken. No, as no, a Jew. absolutely. Yeah. So when you get they, to the pearly gates, they might not know. That's right. So they want to be very specific in what they're no, doing to almost go out of their way. Shh. So <laughs> nobody cares. Okay. So, th- so somebody cares. So there, the guy there knocking are some, outside uh, the door probably cares. <laughs> <laughs> so there is some some documentation um, of him being uh, Jewish, and and there's actually again in, in with the show being you know time limited. Uh, there's also some other uh, authors. Um, I can't think of the one guy off the top of my head, but there's also some some further evidence if you look into it uh, of. Christopher Columbus that supports him being a Murano. I got a question. Secret Jew. Okay. That has nothing to do with, with whether or not Christopher Columbus is a Jew. That was, say, the pearly gates in Western tradition. They also always draw them as gold. Yeah, I don't know. You ever notice that? They're gold covered in pearl essence. 
I, gold I, flakes. I, I don't. I, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Who the fuck flakes. cares? It's heaven. You don't get it. It's done. It's gold flakes. So yeah, you literally we've been don't get it. For like you a, do not no, get it. That's I'm not telling for me. you, John. You will not. That's get not it. for me. So I'm gonna be at the concerts in hell. We <laughs> have been talking. You hate concerts. That makes sense. That's my hell. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we've been talking for a long time about um, Christopher Columbus being a Jew. Right. In the brief description I got of this before we actually sat down to do the show, um, there was talk of Mormons. In the intro, there was talk of Mormons. Yeah, I think he's getting there. Right. Okay. I'm just wondering where the fuck they're going. Well, I'm, then there are Mormons. I'm genuinely sometimes, lost. Sometimes we get lost in the, in, in the high grass trying to do this. Okay. But I, I think, I think I'm I, trying to figure it out. I am, That's I am amazed by how these, 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 these pieces are, are connecting honestly. Well, and, I'm, and, I'm looking at this. But you say they're connecting. I guess the other thing here is you mentioned there may have been Jewish descendants in America. You mentioned it might have been a Jew who found America. Those seem like random and unconnected facts. Yeah, you ever put a puzzle together? You got to have that piece that connects them? Yeah. I think you're about to hear that piece that connects them. I'm well, not sure, but I've looked at the evidence and I think you're about to see this. Well, let's hear it. Okay. So, the Mormon the Mormon traditions. Let me flip over to my notes. So it's it is the Mormons that connect. Yeah, I I I'm looking at the at the at the way this is laid out here and I think that's going to be that piece of the puzzle. So, um, that, that, that pulls it together. Right. Some of this I'm just going to read right off the page. According to the Bible, the Assyrians of the 8th century B.C., which this would be the people that expelled uh, the, the 12 tribes right. of Israel. Right. Uh, two of them stayed, and you have 10 of them that were lost uh, from their lands. They went to the northern kingdom of Israel. And many prominent Americans, such as uh, William Penn, and I'm going to chop this name up. <laughs> Always do. Uh Elias Boudinay. Elias Boudinay. Uh, even even them, which William Penn... Um, Founder of Pennsylvania, that's right. Quaker. Quaker, very prominent person uh, in American history. Uh, they they both believed um, that, and again, a lot to expand upon on a show, but they both have their own writings that actually link the lost tribes of Israel to coming over to America. Yeah, they, they, they accepted that as fact at their, in, their t- in their lifetime. That's right. So, um, so uh, the the Mormons have a uh, uh, part of their. Sorry, we're gonna. <laughs> is this where Joseph Smith enters the picture? This is where Joseph Smith enters. The you picture. don't know Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith was the founder of of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, the Mormon the Church. Mormons. Okay, um, and uh, George, uh, Joseph Smith. According to legend, found these the, 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 these golden tablets, right? That's right. And these these golden tablets talk told him the the history of of Jesus Christ after the Bible. So it's another testament of of the Bible. And if memory serves me correctly, Blaine, uh, he talks about how after Jesus uh, visited the, the the Jews, he then came to America and presented and, pre- yeah, and presented the right. what he called the good news, to the gospel to the Native Americans. Because right. all the Jews moved here. Yeah, and I think that's that's the argument that the Mormon... That is the argument the Mormon Church makes, is that the Americans that were here were the lost tribes, and that's why Jesus returned to present their message to them. That's right. And so one I don't of, know much about Mormonism, but I've never heard that. Yeah, no, no that, yeah. That, 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 that's, that's mainstream uh, Church that of is, Jesus Christ of Latter-day right. Saints. Yeah. Okay. That is mainstream. I just Mormon. know about the magic underwear. The, that's also mainstream. Yeah, that's also mainstream, yep. So, um, so one of Joseph Smith's apostles, okay, they're not Jesus, is one of Joseph Smith's apostles, um, a guy named Orson Pratt, uh, who, uh, again, one of the original 12, and who was the direct descendant, or who Mitt Romney is, an yeah, actual yeah, yeah. direct descendant yeah. of uh, Orson Pratt. Uh, he explained, this is a quote from Orson Pratt, one of the disciples, or the uh, apostles, from many intimidation, uh, intimations of ancient prophecy, the lost, the ten lost tribes evidently had a highway made for them in the midst of the Arctic Ocean and where it led to a land in the neighborhood of the North Pole. Likewise, the tenth Mormon article of faith states, quote, We believe in the literal gathering of Israel 
and in the restoration of the ten tribes that Zion, which would be the new Jerusalem, uh, will build up upon the American continent. All right, so, so right there you have one of the disciples of Joseph Smith saying that the Indians are the descendants of the lost tribes and that their purpose is to regain a, a, a new Jerusalem, build a new Jerusalem in the Americas. That's right. And by the way, that was Salt Lake City whenever the whenever Brigham Young takes the Mormons to Salt Lake City. Mm-hmm. The first name for it was New Jerusalem. Right. Yeah. So that's kind of, for me, that's kind of what ties into where hearing the, the for, for me personally, hearing some of the, the, the Mormon faith without context is a bit out there with this new context tends to make more sense to me. Okay. I think he's going to slaughter my notes. Yeah, so I- no, so I'm, I, I'm reading here and, and I mean, this seems like random babble that may have some, some technical. Cause I'm, okay. For example, from many intimations of ancient prophecy, uh, the Ten Lost Tribes evidently had a highway made for them amidst the Arctic Ocean. You said they came on a boat. Is Are we okay, calling the, so the, the... One of the... Well, but, but, but one I, of the uh, Arctic Highway, uh, whether, it, whether it be a boat or, or a land crossing, so, they don't know what the word highway means in our, in our understanding. It's a way to travel. So, and even oh, predating... Sorry, don't have interstates yet. So, even predating Prince Maddox, okay, yeah. you do have a theory... That there was, and this is goes back to the Vikings. And yeah, this yeah. this is what helps make some of those maps that predate everybody that shows that North America was actually here. One of the one of the theories that actually gains a lot of traction is that the the Arctic ice shelf at the time was much further sure, down sure. than much than, much than Beringia than, is. That's right. Than uh, w- what it is currently, and what they believe this was. Uh, able to provide was for some of the i'll say nordic people it was able to provide them a way to live in a harsh land that they they could at least camp on they already were they already were prepared to do that and that they almost just kind of skipped along that arctic highway uh or that 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 lower ice shelf to actually make it over yeah. to uh newfoundland and and in the northern Americas. That's actually one of the first boats they actually think made it over here from the Nordic people wasn't what you would call a necessarily a seafaring boat. That would be a raft, basically. That's right. Like you said, it was it was something that you could never lose sight of land. Yeah. But they believe that that was actually possible. And to me, what makes this a little bit more believable is we know where the ice shelf was now thanks to modern technology. Yeah. These people that talk about an Arctic Highway... They had no idea. They had no clue that that even was a possibility. They so don't it understand... It had to be an oral history, yeah. It had yeah. to be some sort of an oral history. Yeah, there, there had to be something yeah, there. Uh, oral uh, history. That's at, right. At, but you start putting this together. Um, what I think you get with this story is, is, is you get a lot of evidence that's, uh, that's circumstantial. But I do think that when you start pulling them together with the facts... At a certain point, you have to say there, that, that there's something there. Now, maybe the, the story as you see it is not exactly right, but there's, there's, there seems to be something there. And I'm, 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 I can't believe I'm saying this because it's not the direction I, I would have thought I would have gone. But I'm looking at this and I, I put it together and I go, okay, um, there is evidence, there is evidence of, 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 uh, you know, of, of Jewish people being separated. There is evidence of them reaching the Welsh homeland. There is evidence of people from the well, from the Welsh homelands reaching the Americas in versions of, of architecture. Uh, we, there, there is a great deal of evidence later on that Columbus is, it, it is Jewish and he's looking for a new Jerusalem. We now see the Muslims, oh, I'm sorry, the Mormons start talking about the, the, is, the, the, the Indians as the descendants of the Jews, and what are they looking for? They're looking to build a new Jerusalem. You start putting this stuff together, and you say there's there's a common story here. Whether we've put all the pieces together uh, correctly or not, there's a story. So, it, so what this is basically saying is that the lost tribes of Israel came to America, were Indians, and then Europeans came over and slaughtered them again? 
We just can't fucking get that one right now, can we? Well, I think the Europeans <laughs> did eventually come over and slaughter right. it. But the idea is that there was the a other group Europeans. of people. There was a group of people that were coming here to try and do something else. That they were coming here as right as Jews, right? Whether you call them that or not, you know, the, whatever name you want to give them, they were coming here as 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 this uh, commonality. Because uh, obviously the Indians aren't calling themselves Jews, but when you start looking at the the language, what do they call their god? Right. What is their flood story? And there's a similarity. Here. Why wouldn't they have called themselves Jews well, though? Because the, that's like a big the, part of being Jewish is like re- knowing that you uh, are the descendants. For the of, same reason that 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 you know, within a few hundred years, we change what we call ourselves. Right. When you're separated and you don't have contact with your native people, language changes. Right. It's easy to be skeptical. It's very easy. It's, it's easy. Language is two generations deep. Okay. That's it. Language is two generations. That is a standard belief that in right. two generations your language changes. That doesn't become a different language, but it becomes something something that, that, no, it, that I'm has, saying, has yet, changed. No, I'm saying? And yet, like, Jews have been calling themselves Jews for They've been call- three, four no. thousands in, in, of years. In, in that part of the world they have. Yeah. But as they're moving and they don't have contact with those old those older societies. You don't have contact with them. The language will change. Just like Eng- f- American English is different than British English. Is it- Indian English is different but than American, British English. Like, well, that we thing- have, there are still people in the U.S. that call themselves Jews. They well, still sure. speak... But, well, there's a, but they, they came from the they language. came from there's Israel. A, the language. There's a logistical language. there's a yeah, logistical fine. barrier that existed then that really yeah, doesn't exist now. It was there more was than no, two generations ago. But there again, this is changing because now we we, we, we can speak across board. We can Hebrew. speak through the internet. Uh, and actually, if you want to know the truth, Hebrew was a dead language and it was brought back from mm-hmm. the dead. Mm-hmm. It, it, uh, there is no there are no native Hebrew speakers as far as right. this 1948 when Israel came back, they brought that language back from the dead. So here's what I love. Right. Here's what I love about this whole thing, right? So in America, there's there's APAC and there's this 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 large group that supports Jews and Israel specifically, and are always jumping down the Palestinians' throats saying. Well, I mean, you, you gotta share. You gotta share, right? And at the same time, running Indians out of their reservations to build pipelines across it. I mean, can I, can I get some irony here? Yeah, well, I, 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 I mean, you know, maybe it's an argument for educating the, the, people. The thing, the thing that I found out with doing this research is, is, which I completely understand and respect the, the, all the skepticism that we're able to have now because we know all these things we it's it's easiest for us to know all of european history you can just go on the internet yeah and what what is fascinating to me is none of none of the groups that we've touched on really even knew or cared the other existed without this mainstream line of they were Perhaps one of the tribes of Israel. Yeah, there was there was something there that was driving all of them. That's right, and uh, you know, I find it fascinating. There's no reason for the Welsh, as we know them today, to have any kind of connection with the Indians. Yeah, at no, all. no, there's not, or there's, uh, or, or, the, or the Mormons to know anything about seafaring uh, pre uh, pre Columbus era. You, you've got to see the steps. Boat. There are steps right. here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and honestly, this argument seems to fit the. This is the way we make historical arguments. One of the is most we important take all things about stuff. being Jewish is remembering that you're Jewish. Uh, is it? I, I mean, know. do you have some again, some something. Jewish insight? Again, that, if you're being killed for it, you are going to hide that, and you're going to keep something. But they maintained it anyway. But they they did they maintained it secretly. That's why they they're called the Moran right. or the secret Jews. They kept some of it, but outwardly. They were Christians. They were try- I, they were pretending. I like how of these twelve tribes, uh, a few of them have really retained that heritage, and Anna has taken it upon herself to be the yeah. decider the of what that it means to be it were Jewish. The ones that stayed and there. she, they were she the ones she's that came like, back. Well, this these- is my understanding of like this is why they don't like and, want you to marry not Jewish people. Well, and actually, and that's a different that, that's a different kind well, of and, Jew. And yeah. actually, and actually, not to not to reignite everything, but. You can actually look at some of what the the Mandarin in, or Mandan. <laughs> Mandan Indians. They're not Chinese. I know. I know. Mandan. <laughs> the Mandan Indians. Your they, whole theory is falling apart. Right. Because <laughs> Mandarin Indians. No, the, what the Mandan Indians actually called themselves in their native language actually yeah. 
kind of translates back to the Maddox. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which would be the 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 Prince Maddox. Yeah. And again, and that, they, that word meant the people to they, them, which by the way is what the Jews right. called themselves. They were they were the chosen people. Yeah. And again, they still kept all of the traditions, uh, and, and as described as Except. certain. No, as described to certain uh, to certain historians, they they kept it more than uh, others did. Yeah, than others did. Yeah. It, it seemed to come over and and maybe it evolved in its own sphere, but it se- there there was something there. So, uh, so what's the point of this? Do we want? I think we You're just Jewish. got through talking. Native about Americans it. or Jews? You're That's Jew. the point. Um, all of them. We're all Jew. All of us, <laughs> yeah, nah. pretty much. So. I, I wanted to kind of do a round table here and, and kind of run through this and, and see what, uh, what – because this this has given me some things to think about here. Uh, what what on this is is believable? What on this is not believable? What, what, what do you think? Who wants to start with this discussion? I don't know. I mean, so so certain parts kind of – Kind of where are you? Yeah. I mean, I, I was already kind of there with – Columbus is probably a, a secret Jewish refugee – who was hiding under? I've even heard it that he was hiding under a pseudonym. Yeah, uh, that, 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 that's pretty much standardly expect, yeah. accepted. So, um, I, I mean, I was, I, I've, I'd kind of already heard that, and, and, and the story's kind of made sense. Uh, we're now saying Elizabeth didn't fund it. I can buy into that. I don't, it Isabel. didn't make sorry. It, well, Isabel. she did, she did, but she did it through banking. Right. You know? yeah, yeah, it, it didn't make sense to me until the Armada argument came out because there wasn't any reason for him to go to her. But I, all right, fine, fine, fine. Uh, land bridge, you know, I have some problems here because, not just because could that, that Arctic shelf land bridge, you know, hopping thingy exist, but when you talk about the migration, what, what happens to the whole Bering Strait story? Does that just like disappear and, and that didn't happen now? It was all well, this? No, you know? no, I think the idea is that there could be more than one migration. No, okay. that's why they were different from the other. Indians. Yeah, that's why there were some Indians that were and some that weren't. Yeah. Okay. Right. Fair enough. Um, and, you know, I also got to ask, we're, we're talking about them as being the lost tribes of Israel, but how much, how much dilution do you need before you can't make the argument anymore? For instance, if I had some, you know, 10th generation back great uncle who was half Jewish, do I get to be part of the lost tribe now? Because, that you know, at some I, dilution point. Under Jewish law, yes. You know. Under Jewish law, yes. Um, but at, at some point when you start making this argument, Everybody's part of the lost tribes because of just the numbers it's a, it's and, and how argument. dilution, it's, you know. It's a good argument. That's what I said. Uh, yeah. We're all Jew. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, all the pieces make sense to me, but I think we have kind of watered down things in such a way to build a narrative that at some point, um, it, 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 it it's, a meaningless truth. Does but, that make sense? But again, isn't that That's kind, kind of, of where I'm coming to? Isn't on that this? what yeah. we do with history, though? Is we take all these pieces and we put them together and we say, okay, this is the big picture. Now you've got your little pictures that, that are, and the closer you get, the truer it is to you. But if you go right. back far enough, this is this is a truth. That's what we do yeah. in history. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I. We're talking about like these people who ran away from persecution spent a millennia forgetting who the fuck they were which is reasonable traveling and forgetting even more who they were though somehow um while language changes and they have no idea who the fuck they are or where they came from or why they are something special maintained all of these traditions which that doesn't even anyway um that makes sense actually to me you, yeah it does perfect to me too. sense to me and and a lot of traditions that i think are not that uncommon. Um, you know, you can talk about the language stuff and whatnot, but it just, it seems like a stretch. So you're saying it that they, seems like a stretch. you're saying that they lost and all a their pointless tra- stretch. You're saying that they lost all their traditions and they lost no, who they, they were. No, they didn't lose their traditions. No, they didn't you're lose saying, their traditions. You're saying they lost their language and all their traditions, but somehow kept some of them. That's what you said. Well, and yet if you ask most Americans why they have a Christmas tree, it's because Jesus was born. Yeah. But <laughs> I'm just saying. But and and again too, when you say l- losing their tradition and not I still out- never said lose their traditions. Well, well, that's what the rest of us heard from. Yeah, you that's what we heard. Whether so, you meant to or not, that's the way and, we took it. And so. again, remember, it was not 
an okay thing to be a Jew. Yeah. No, I get that. So that's why when you see a lot of these where they're outwardly not professing like, oh, I'm a Jew. Like, that's not what I'm calling myself per se. But then we have all these Jewish things that we do in secret. Why the fuck did they come over here if it wasn't to outwardly be Jews? To escape. Yeah. To to not get killed. To get... Because if they had just converted where they were and like lived like everybody else, they would have been okay, fine. Okay. But they wanted to come. But again, if they were to come yeah. over here, why wouldn't they just? I think they live did. Outwardly, I think they did. They did. But, but no, they happened? didn't know they were Jews. No, I think I think I think the ones that came here probably did. But over generations, no, by the t- you lose y'all that. said by the time they came you're over, confused. they yeah. didn't know th- they were Jewish anymore. I think you're, at every you're step you lose it. At every you, step you lose a little bit. You're, you're confused, Anna. You are confusing the fact that Christopher Columbus came over here to outwardly be a Jew with the fact that some descendants came over who weren't coming over to be outwardly yeah. be Jews. They were like, they were for coming some over reason, for what? They were coming to I, explore, and yeah, at yeah. some point they got left. You're confusing those two narratives. Yeah, yeah. There's, okay. there's two narratives that are running together here. Uh, I, I think that's a good point. Yeah. All right, I want to tell you that what, what I liked about this is uh, I'm kind of the opposite of you. I'm amazed at how much is you kept buy into in here. All of it. At how much is kept? I, I don't buy into all of it. I, I'm I'm amazed at how much of the of the language is kept, how much of the culture is kept, because I, as a historian, I would expect uh, more of it to be lost. Right. If anything, I think the evidence seems to be too good. It's it's it, it seems to fit too well for that time that that amount of time. As what I would expect is 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 for less of it to to be alike. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, which that's that's a red flag. You know, me. It, it, it's, it's kind of like it's if we not were, like we can't still read information from the 1700s and get it. Well, again, but but you had to put. We, we, but we, language changes every two generations. You have, it does because but think about it. At that time period, it was all oral, right? So it would change much quicker. As as we have added writing, it's changed less. As we have added internet, it's changed less. Anna is very takes, defensive about the language it takes, changing I, here. It honestly It's an asinine statement. It's a no, true it's statement. I think that in it's reading a true statement in th- oral language. I think that, that reading that you having it. I, I mm-hmm. think that reading into a lot of this, honestly, I think that when when you read over it, it just as you do like a like perhaps you would a newspaper article or something like that, it's it does seem a bit kind of shoddy or whatever. Yeah. But if you read it from the people who were writing it, and if you put yourself in the position of what all was true to them when they were writing these things, it changes the context completely. Okay. Well, hey, uh, we have we gotten through this? Or are we, I think we, so. we pretty good here. Uh, it, with with that, I think we need to tell our audience something. What do you think? Yeah, probably about the time. Probably out of time. Tell our audience. Uh, what y'all you, wrote a conspiracy what, that y'all believe now? What, what you've just experienced is a, a bit of a thought experiment here that, that, that we wanted to do. Um, every fact that you have been given today is a true fact. Every fact that you have been given is a true fact. But the connections that, 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 that were made, that was made by Blaine and I with okay. lots and lots of beer involved. Yes. The, uh, th- this was all about showing you how conspiracy theories are made. Uh, nothing was made up here. What we have just nothing. done is just Dan Browns you a little bit. Uh, if you read the 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 uh, Da Vinci Code That's and stuff, you, never uh, mind. It's where you take and you take all, take all these this interspersed like data and you kind of put it together and see what comes out. Now, and when that, she says nothing, I want to I want to go one one more time through all the screenshots. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I'm telling you, it'll blow your mind. I'm, I'm telling you there. What we have found, we have found things here that probably some of this stuff is connected. Okay, uh, because because every because everything in here was a fact. There are probably some things that are connected, but the fact that we took three or four different narratives and we linked them together with something, uh, this is how this is how conspiracy theories are built. And according to what you said, how history is built. It is how history yeah. is built. Okay. I just want to make that clear. I, 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 conspiracy it, it theories and history are built the same they way. They are. They are. That's why you have to look closely at well, the facts. You, you know what? I love it because one of John Nash's favorite, one of my favorite quotes of his. So for anyone who doesn't know, John Nash was a great mathematician uh, who also was schizophrenic. And he believed aliens were talking to him. And somebody asked him once, they said, you're such a smart guy, John. 
how did you believe the aliens? And his answer was because the aliens came to me the same way my math answers did. And I think that's what makes the conspiracy theories so believable is when the answers come, the conspiracy theories come the same way the history does. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so kind of the way this worked out, I went through, I, I had a direction I wanted to go with this. I wanted to prove uh, the lost tri tribes of Israel hypothesis. And I went and just found what I wanted to and, and, and plugged it in. And, and then Blaine found some more stuff and, and dropped it in there and, and presented it to you. Um, that having been said, uh, there, there, there were some things in here that, that kind of freak you out as you're looking at it. It, 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 it there, there were some things. We, and yeah. I can see how somebody can get sucked into this real easy. Uh, if you're looking at this and they line the evidence up, I can see where somebody could, uh, could, well, it, it could, 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 could fall into it if you're not thinking critically and, about it. And you can see my, my page of notes that go much further than, than only the ones that I read over. Well, it, it, it I, think you're a bit. In, I think you're in a different place even than I am. Right. Because I went through and said, this is what I want to prove. And I went through and found some stuff. And then I handed it over to Blaine. And I said, Blaine, run with this. Right. And so he had it, he had, he had it given to him. And he had to m make connections. I now it. know I'm at least susceptible to something like this. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's Because it did wind up actually making sense to you me. You can some make it, it make sense. You, you can. can. Uh, uh, and and, and I, I don't think... Uh, I, I, Anna, Anna didn't 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 buy into anything. Uh, and of course, Anna and Red well, also both both I knew, just knew we were doing. What the fucking point is? <laughs> well, and I love how Anna's biggest argument was that that she was against the idea that language changes in two generation. But one day when she finally falls off her horse, whether or not she grocks it, uh, <laughs> people are going to move on. And uh, we, you know, we all know a Rolling Stone. Uh, he looked up an old loss. word. He, did, he looked he up an old word, uh, and I've never made the argument that some words don't change. But the argument that Mike made was that language is completely different every two generations. No, and that's, that's not what he said. That's, that's not, not what he said, what I said at, all. at all. I said a language is two, two, gen is two generations deep. deep, and that's that is standard. That is something they teach you in linguistics yeah. classes. A language change. I think you said through. a different thing, but that's fine. Uh, well, if I did, I apologize. That's what I meant by it. Fine. Uh, so the idea here being that, that, that if I would expect a language to be totally different. Right. Uh, we know that if you take the Romance language, and within about 500 years, you had Spanish, you had French, you had Italian. They, right. You had Roman they all broke down in different languages. It's just something that happens. It's the Italians and the Welsh were pretty close, and then so. the Italians broke, broke down broke down even further. So, what do y'all think about this now? That, now that we've exposed it to the audience, um, in, in any parting thoughts? I, on I, here? I mean, I, while I was sitting there listening to Blaine, so so Blaine actually ran it by me before we started the show, um, and, and so so yeah, partially. So Blaine was actually like, yeah, there there's some stuff here, and I think you you've bought some of it, yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm sitting here listening. It's all facts, right? Everything that I read was a fact. Yeah. yeah. I, I read it in a particular order to, to. Yeah. And, and, and so I'm sitting here listening to it and I know it's something made up. So I'm, I'm listening to it with the ear well, that the is narrative right. is made up. Yeah. But I can even listen to this and say, okay, yeah. And A and B and C. And you know what? I'm sitting here going, you know, you're telling me this is all facts. I trust Blaine. Blaine's a good guy. You can trust him. I, I trust Mike. Oh, thanks. I'm not going to go look any of this shit up, as is not 95% of the people. Yeah. And they're right. going to go, yeah. And what they may do is Google real quick, maps of America uh, before Columbus. And if any picture pulls up, they're like, oh, fuck. Yeah, that is yeah. a thing. Yeah. 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 And that's all they need. Yeah. yeah. And, one, and one Google result that says so. Right. Yeah. I'm going to be so pissed at you guys if, like, in 50 years, this is in textbooks. <laughs> I, I I'm, I'm, just like saying, I'm just saying I'm just saying really pissed at you guys I'm just saying Orson Welles is a legend for uh, War of the World so you know yeah. will you like question everything else you learn in history at that point well I feel like I I generally like am not surprised when things that I learned in history class turn out to not be accepted truth anymore so which is what we want history history to be. We right. want the fact that we're always learning and, and, and redefining things. Yeah. So uh, Mike, is it fair to say at this point if conspiracy theories and history kind of come about from the same not kind soil of, but totally. If his, if if conspiracy theories and history kind of come back from the same soil, can we call historians professional conspiracy theorists? Yes. Uh, uh, to an extent, yeah. To an extent, yeah. yeah. I think uh 
But, but Nobody be, was there. Because we're, <laughs> we're, when you we're write your thesis, somebody do this. Yeah. We when do you this. write your thesis, this is what you do. And, 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 and we should. The idea is we should be taking evidence, we should be putting it together, and we should be coming up with something. Now, you shouldn't make the leaps and, and bounds that I made with this. I intentionally did this in a way to, ma- to make it, uh, you know, kind of ridiculous a bit at times. But uh, I, I, I think it. I think it's an argument. It, it kind of works, um, guys. I'll tell you that there was a lot of argument between us, or discussion at least, as to whether we should even do this show because one of the things that we're about is presenting truth to you, and we were presenting a lie to you today. We were, uh, but. We and want, we're about two hours in, and I bet we lost most people and we, already. And we may have, but I wanted to do this as a thought experiment to show you how easy it is to uh, to bend facts to you. So if you don't like it, it's my fault. If you do like it, it's, it's also my fault. But be so, skeptics. Uh, <laughs> question everything, and that's what I want right. you to take out of this, okay? Are we good, guys? I think so. I think we're good. No, Anne, are you still speaking to me? No. I'm never speaking to you after the episodes. You know that. I that's know, always know, what happens. I, I love you, Anna. It's a you typical back. show. Uh, uh, so anyway, Mike does a history. I do the color commentary. Anna does the angry. So, it's <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, um, if you liked what we've done here, you can support us on Patreon by going to patreon.com slash six pack philosophy. You can also get some eh, swag at uh, teespring.com search six pack philosophy. Searching six pack philosophy on any uh, social media website will usually get you something related to us. Um, other than that, Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We've enjoyed it. And we hope you have too. Cheers. 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 Enjoy it. Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. 